The Honourable Member for Provence. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's always a privilege to speak on behalf of Canadians and in particularly of my constituents in the riding of Provence, which, uh, by the way, for those that don't know where Provence is, that's southeast Manitoba. Today I'm speaking on Bill C-52, an act to uh, enact the Air Transportation Accountability Act and to amend the Canada Transportation Act and Canada Marine Act. While there are parts of this bill that I believe go in the right direction, and I will uh, affirm that uh, I have concerns. Probably one of the biggest concerns is this bill's title not living up to its intentions. And not just missing an opportunity, but missing the point. You may remember the story of, uh, of the man in a restaurant who calls out to the waiter, what is this fly doing in my soup? To uh, which the waiter is first silent, and then he looks down at the soup, and then he exclaims, the backstroke. Well, like this waiter, this bill misses an opportunity. It misses the point. So something we have observed over the past eight years is that while this government is very good at photo ops and making an announcement, it's much harder for this government to implement initiatives that get to the heart of the real issues. The importance of considering how each decision, how each effort, each initiative will make a difference to the big picture in any bill to get direct gets lost in the photo ops and the glossy announcements. But, le but let me say this, what I believe this bill had intentions of doing and, uh, and based on its title, because accountability is a foreign concept to this NDP Liberal government and something that hasn't proven easy for this government to even comprehend. No doubt my honourable colleagues will remember the summer of 2022 with 9,500 flights being cancelled in July and August and the Christmas that followed. My colleagues would well remember this time because their offices were flooded with travel stories that went wrong. <coughs> After being cooped up, isolated, mandated and restricted, Canadians were finally free to travel, free to visit loved ones that, that they had missed through COVID, free to catch up on celebrating family milestones that had been neglected, free to embark on new adventures and experience the joys of travel, but also free to grieve and mourn with those whose loved ones had passed away. But as the stories unfolded, the long-held dreams became deflated with long wait lists. Overflowing baggage halls, stranded passengers, flight cancellations and delays. On-time performance, according to the Greater Toronto Airport Authority President and CEO Deborah Flint, was at 35% in the summer of 2002. That would be a failing grade, even by Liberal standards. It was reported that Toronto Pearson's airport was listed as the second worst in the world for delays. Travellers made every effort to avoid connecting through Toronto, yet luggage lagged even further behind with some headlines reporting that airlines were donating unclaimed baggage to charities after 90 days. And in some cases, frustrated and angry travellers traced their luggage through the use of air tags in luggage stowed away, or found that luggage stowed away in off-site storage facilities. This past January, it was reported that a shortage of pilots compounded the problem. Regardless, people slept on floors and endured the relentless chaos. As you can see, Madam Speaker, the problems were layered and complicated. It was good that the government finally felt compelled to act, and this act, Bill C-52, was their response. Clearly, those layers of accountability need to be considered and addressed, which is why Conservatives believe that every federally regulated entity that has a role to play in the delivery of air travel must be held responsible for delays or cancellations, including airlines, airports, CATSA, NAV Canada, and CBSA. If security lineups are delaying people to the point where they're missing flights or airport baggage handling is not functioning in a timely manner or CBSA isn't staffed sufficiently, then there are concerns that need to be addressed. Each layer of service and delivery needs to be held accountable. One of my biggest concerns with this bill is how much power it gives to the Minister and Cabinet to develop the regulations in future. Instead of including concrete improvements in the legislation, on the final page of this bill, in the closing section, the key sections are referenced as coming into force at a later date to be determined. Yeah. Well, if I may, let me tell another story. You know, a fellow was walking along a country road when he came upon a farmer working in his field. And uh, the man called out to the farmer, hey, how long will it take me to get to the next town? The farmer didn't answer. The guy waited a bit, then he just started to walk on. And uh, after about 100 yards away, the farmer yelled out, about 20 minutes. 
Well, thank you, said the traveler, but why didn't you tell me that when I asked you? To which the farmer replied, didn't know how fast you were going to walk. Well, you see, without providing this needed information in this bill, without considering the fullness of information, the details make a difference to the outcome or the expectations. How can we know if we agree with future measurements that Cabinet and the Minister will put in place? You see, as a Conservative, I don't believe that giving more and more power to government is the solution. Instead, I believe that accountability helps set up organizations for better success and improved service delivery. The law firm McCarthy Tatro provides insight into the bill in a blog based on their assessment, referencing the bill authorizing the Governor and Council to make regulations respecting de the development and implementation of service standards related to flights and flight-related services. It is the uncertainty of what these service standards may entail at a future time and how they will impact the day-to-day -day operation as a, noted, as a concern that they noted. But they also capture the element that deeply concerns me. They write, the Act grants the Minister broad powers to request information from airport operators, air carriers and entities providing flight-related services. Requests may include information regarding the capacity and the development of Canadian air transportation system, operations and air traffic, and compliance by an airport operator with Canada's international obligations in respect of aeronautics, as well as any information that an airport authority is required to keep in accordance with its governing corporate legislation. The problem is that this is a toothless bill that contains no specific remedies to the problems that have been plaguing the system. Gathers a lot of information, doesn't have any teeth. Without specifics, we are told that we need to trust the minister and his word to solve all the problems. Well, the minister and cabinet would solve all these problems by future undefined regulations, but in the interim, the bill would allow for data collection and sharing that would somehow make it better for Canadian travelers? Huh. Yes what data would be captured and what it would look like when service standards are not met are not even mentioned. My colleague from Chilliwack Hope in his speech in the House referenced McGill University Aviation Management lecturer John Cradick on this subject. There's a lot of stuff about data sharing but not much about what or who would be taking action and what conditions that action, under what conditions that action would be taken. The lack of detail on important issues is alarming. What about the backlog of complaints with the Canadian Transportation Agency, which has grown by 3,000 complaints per month, with a backlog of over 60,000 complaints, all now waiting to be adjudicated by the agency? I remember a number of months back chatting with a friend who said, it's become my expectation that I need to factor in travel delays in my business planning. In fairness, while we have moved past the horrific status of having the second worst number of delays in the world, people are still waiting for answers. Passengers are unable to resolve their compensation claims and are waiting over 18 months to have their claims considered by CTA. Unfortunately, nothing in the bill deals with this. The bill is vague and once again, as is common with many of the actions and posture of this government, projects a government knows best attitude. All we have to do is give away sweeping powers for this to happen. The government and governor and council have no business in the boardrooms or management of Canadian corporations or businesses. What the government should be focused on is on achieving outcomes. I come back to my first point at the beginning. I think it is unfortunate that this bill is a missed opportunity. But having said that, I want to end on the point that we do support. Let me start by saying that we have no problem with accessibility and disability portions of the bill. We also appreciate that this bill may have had good intentions, but it's missed the mark completely. Fortunately, Madam Speaker, common sense Conservatives will continue to advocate for Canadians and do everything we can to help this government redirect their efforts in support of Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker.